Hey, good recording in progress. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Virtual Cheese Awards 2024. We are today judging class E5, the best organic hard cheese. And I am joined very gratefully by the amazing Charlie and the even brilliant James who are just we've had the most fantastic morning waxing lyrical about other cheeses uh, and we've been blown away by the incredible quality of the cheeses that we've had so um we are going to judge each cheese on four attributes the appearance the aroma the texture and the flavor and the highest winning cheese will go forward into the categories finals on the 14th of May. Uh, we will say, let's go for cheese number one, which is 1041. It looks oh, like this. Light is playing. One zero four one. Yes, he wants to kick us off. Charlie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, it's a cheese. Anybody else That's want to question that? It's definitely a cheese. It's a hard cheese. It's a hard cheese. It's a cow's milk cheese, and it looks like a classic mold. It's got that sort of little ridge there, which you see on sort of. Uh, smaller cheese is maybe about four kilos, you reckon, there, James? For a yes, definitely, yeah. And it's got a distinctive um, brushed orangey rind, which is dry. And I wonder if it's been plaster coated or anything. Doesn't look like I it. was thinking that. I uh, think it possibly is. Well, I'm trying to break it. Yes, I think it is. Um, I am I'm not against plastic coaches in case anybody thinks that I'm making some sort of negative aspersion. A lot of great cheeses from Lincolnshire Poacher to Manchegos to Gouda's. They're all plastic and they make great cheese. But I think that's how you keep the, the molds off the top here. Anyway. Well, thank you for clarifying, Charlie. Got a lactic note. A sharpness on the smell. And there's no difference between the rind and the... and Well, not... Not much difference in the rind and the and the main paste. I'm picking up kind of um a, a, a ascorbic citrusy clearly notes on the nose as well from the curd from the paste. Interesting. I'm going into the heart of the cheese first. So we're thinking mouthfeel wise, guys. It's a good, it's a good mouthfeel. It's really fruity, like orange, orange peel. Slightly farmy and peel. buttery. Now you've said orange peel, I know exactly what I mean. Yeah, it's like a kind of a little bit farmy and buttery. I'm I definitely getting. On the on the read through like the the cave with two holes, I'm kind of following that through. I'm getting that lovely, pleasant, farmy note. I'm really enjoying that. I think it's bit, getting a real tingle rather around the sides of the tongue. It's quite a sort of sharp. Um, yeah, it's high acidity, like little needles. It's more than acidity. Um, it's got a real sort of trigeminal physicality on the tongue. And it's got quite a lot of farmy notes, if we're going to be honest. It's, it's almost an eye winker. Sherbet. Sherbet. Good description. Sherbet note. 
share the facility. I feel I should be able to tell you what the what the chemical that's doing this kind of big mouth firework thing is. Um, what you're describing is sherbet, but I don't know it. You know the sherbet dib dabs. Oh yes, I still my children. Sherbet dib dab note. Okay. And it's got a meaty note behind it. Yeah. I'm going to get closer to the to the uh, rind now, just see what happens if that's different. That's meteor. The paste structure is different. In what in what respect? Well, it's more palpy. It breaks down differently than the part of the cheese, which is more is smoother. But it's meatier. It's a bit more granular, isn't it? Right around the edge. Yeah, and granular as well. Towards the end, I'm getting this granular. It's it's, it's, quite, it's a pleasant cheese. It's lovely. Lots of little. So very let's, different. Let, let's head into it. Um, visually, it's very attractive. That that orange, the, the shape of the cheese is is a nice shape. Um, but that orange sort of brushed edge that sort of gives the impression of of being polished. Uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting cheese. It'll look good in a counter. Um, I'm not sure what gives it that character. It feels like it's been made wet, maybe wet brushed in some way. Um, the aroma is, sorry, the visual, I think we can give a sort of seven and a half, eight and a half, something in that order, James? Yeah, I'd go middle, so eight. Yeah. Eight. I like it. I think it would it would show well. On the smell, I don't think it's got a pronounced smell of any sort of, Big numbers, um, nothing negative, but nothing sort of really coming at us in a, in a really supportive way. So maybe seven and a half, something of that order. Seven and a half. I don't think you'd expect much smell from this side of cheese, though, would you, uh, would you, Charlie? Well, until I understand the rind better, I'm sort of a bit sitting on the fence. I don't really understand how the rind's been made. Yeah, um, we're thinking it may be plastic oak, and if it is, then it's going to be somewhat constricted, I guess. But it just... Or is it? I, I don't know is the answer. It's just not it, it 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 you can scratch it and the bits come off. There's no there's no continuity yeah. to the rind as if it was stuck together with plastic in some way. It's just it's just I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Is is it would it be wrong of me suggesting it's kind of an almost an alpine style? Well a morge, you know, and uh You think Morge? No. Um, but I mean, I, I would like to be told. <laughs> we can sit here and guess for a while. Um, I was going to say, sadly, unable yeah. to do that today, guys. Okay. But uh, I'm going to really press. I just, you. I just feel like it's been washed in some way, which is um, which is which is a possibility. Um, uh, so I, but from the smell, what what aroma would you want to give it? What price? Have we already done aroma? Sorry, apologies. Waiting for your score. So I was thinking seven. Seven and a half. Okay. Um, what's next? Uh, mouthfeel. Yeah. Texture or mouthfeel? I'm more on the seven front with that because it's okay, quite different. Okay, seven, from... done. Yeah. And flavour. So to me, it does have a little bit of missing balance. Um, I feel I'm getting that um, around the tongue bite as being the dominant characteristic and the other flavors, which are really nice, like the meatiness, like the fruity notes, like the lemon that you're talking about. I feel I have mm. to fight through the bite to get to it. Mm. So I would, I wouldn't describe this as fully balanced. I would agree with that as well. Yeah. It's quite broken in, in parts. Mm. It's, it's a very pleasant cheese in so many, on so many levels. I'm guessing this cheese would melt really well as well. Got a very yeah, it's it's got a smoother curd than some cheddars would offer. All right, so on the balance one, sort of sort of seven, six and three quarters, seven, something like that. I think I think we go seven, Charlie. All right, cool. And just remember if you want to revisit it later, you can. Will do. Yeah. Okay, chaps, thank you very much. Can we go on to one oh seven six, please? Do you do you say you do have this one, James? One oh seven six, I do, yes. Mm -hmm. 
This feels like it's a much bigger cheese. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this would be an eight kilo. Yeah, maybe a bit more. I mean, it's got to be 10. Yeah, and about yeah. that big kind of thing. It's um, plastic coat. This one, yeah, this one definitely does have a plastic coat. Much more of the Gouda style. And the edge. Definitely, well, definitely entirely, a Harvey style. Definitely, that's not entirely Gouda. Edge right? one. You've got the tyrosine in there. If you can see, if you can see those lovely white bits just there. Mm hmm Yeah. It's got a kind of moisture. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's actually, it's picking, the camera's picking up really well, Charlie. Cool. I think part of that's been, been um, given because of the way it's been packaged as well, the plastic I, or whatever I'm, packaging I'm not, I'm not agreeing, James. This is coming out of the centre of the cheese. I think it's being... Is it? it, it okay, it, I didn't know. I haven't cut that yet. Tears in the eyes, as they say. Oh, yes. It, oh, that's all right, though. I like that. Yeah, there's definitely, um, you can see the tears there. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited to try this. Here we go. What's the smell? I was going to say, you didn't actually say anything about the aroma, guys. Oh, it's got a... exactly what I'd expect from a cheese it's like got this. Pork crackling. It's got a pork crackling smell. Yes, it does on the outside, doesn't it? Hmm. This reminds me of that. Um, is it Swedish cheese, the Vastabottensos, the summer cheese? Do you know what I mean? With a sort of a high cooking okay. point that gives it a fudgy note. And this has really quite a fudgy note. Wowzers. Well, that's, that's got a gorgeous mouthfeel. It does. I was expecting it to be a little more curdy than this. In fact, it's very smooth, and it makes a sort of rather sort of pleasant cheese oiliness. And it brings in some... Reminds me of um, cauliflower cheese. Is that weird? Yes. Or mac and cheese, even. Do you know what I mean, though? Like when you I do. Cauliflower I, cheese. Yeah, I do, I do. That's lovely. That's really lovely. Buttery. And it, it just reminds me of cauliflower cheese. I've never ever had a taste of that in my life before. Cauliflower cheese. And now I've got a lovely crunchy, crunchy bit. Very interesting. I think this would be an easy sell, not least because it's got such a high sweet note. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'll be bagging this any day. Trust me. But it's um, it's not massively complex beyond behind its sort of sweet dairy fudgy notes. Um, Does it need to be? Not necessarily. I'm just observing. I'm trying to look for vegetable herbaceous, you know, mineral notes. There's not really even any farmyard notes. No, it's just got it's got that lovely buttery back dairy note. Mm. And that caramel sweetness with this like crunch to it. It's delicious. Um what have, what's that what's that what stuff? Have, Biscoff. It's a bit sort of biscoff. Biscoff, yeah. I don't ever want to say biscoff. Don't then. I'm not going to. Charlie, you can say that again if you like. <laughs> um, I mean, I think I know which cheese it is, and I'm incredibly jealous you have it in front of you. I wish to face plant it. But this I'm sample just... is coming home. Well, that's the highest accolade Sorry. of the day so far, chaps. <laughs> Yeah, no, well, I like it. I've also... I like it. I'm, I'm not. I'm not giving it the best cheese of the day. I'm not giving it the best cheese of the day. Um... Mind you, all of the samples are coming home. To be fair, they're all really good in their own way. Uh, mine are already at home, so I, I I have a special fridge um shelf in the fridge. Start again. I have a special shelf in the fridge which my children and wife are not allowed to go on. Um, 
So it comes down off that shelf after this thing, and then people will then gan at it and start having a look around. I think I think this is going to be the the most crowd pleasing. It's got that sweet, crunchy, but not in a Yay. cheddar way, not in a sort of salty, savory way. It's very much in a um, fudgy, sweet fudgy with hints. It's not even gouderish. Um, it's it's just that very cooked milk kind of style. Yummy. Well, let's give it a score for appearance. Oh, Charlie, try it by the uh, right. That's amazing. So by the rind, just underneath, I'm getting a beautiful, nutty, almost like a Comte flavour. It's yep. freaking awesome. It is an awesome cheese. Just like a Comte. That is better. That's just, wow, what happened? Those lovely nuts and biting into, that's just, that's lovely. That's really nice. That's made that even more special for me. That's why we should always eat our cheese from every part just to see what happens, because that is great. And that's an artisan cheese. That's beautiful. I, 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 I'm i loving this cheese. I just think you're loving it more than me. Well, if it's yeah, the one so I, I'm that. thinking of, it's one of my all-time faves. So... Uh, I have to say, I think I'm going to be with James on this one, but I'm not allowed to vote. Where, and where, I'm going do, we, to, I'm where do we get to? What, we what didn't we get to? anywhere. We're going to start with appearance. Nowhere. Appearance, it's, it's it's great. Eight, I don't know. 8.5. Okay, 8.5. Uh, aroma? Perfect. Mm. Uh, there is lots about the aroma I like. You know uh, what I'm going to say if you're saying it's it, perfect. Yes, but it's not perfect to me. So it's not. Um... I'm going 9.5. 9, sorry, 9. 9. Okay. How, but, but Carl's going to go, if it's perfect, why isn't it a 10? I know, so that's why you're, you, you're, you're not there. On, you're on that. Not even slowly. Not no, this. I'm I'm getting quite quite animal notes, um, farmyard notes off the, off the main part of the rind. and um, We're getting pork scratchings on the outside. I know, I know. I think it's gone now, though. Now I'm now, eating it. Now I'm getting um the pig is bolted. Sort of, the pig is still alive smell. Wow. I'm smelling the live pig. Mm. I don't think I want to smell live pig. Oh, what you got against pigs? Absolutely nothing. Um but some not of my with best those caramel fudgy notes. That's all in the middle. Uh so what do we get to? Smell, texture, yes. we liked very much. You can give no, it we a... haven't given it we haven't given it an aroma yet. Oh, uh, four. I know, I'm joking. I don't know. Where do you want to go? I think I just need to come down a point or so off you, basically. So we go nine then, or 8.5? 7.5. Eight. Right. Look it is then, guys. Bearing in mind, James thought it was perfect. It should therefore be a nine if you're taking a point off. down to nine. Yeah. So okay, I'm, texture I'm going to go checks. with Charlie. I think I'm just grumpy guts on this one. I I oh, like it. What happened to Happy Charlie from this morning? No, 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 no. The cheese is the cheese, man. I'm in this moment. And this <laughs> moment says, I'm finding this a bit sweet and that's it's about fine. it. You know. It's absolutely fine. Texture. Oh, the texture is nice. I like the way it became really smooth in the mouth. Yeah, it had a lovely breakdown in the mouth. It was really good. Just I'm, I'm, I'm saying smelly. nine. This is one of the nicest mouthfeels I've had in at least <laughs> know, eight hours. Um, uh, well, I'll nine then, but I'm I'm holding my my cannon fire back for the taste. Give us the taste then, Charlie. Um, I think it's got a significant sour, no, not sour, um, fudgy you note know, with a cooked milk, condensed milk kind of vibe. With that crunchy summer um, tyrosine, uh, uh, moist, almost almost nutty oil combo. What I'm not getting is any significant specific nuts, and I'm not getting any complexity beyond that. Um, so I think it is a simple pleasure, and for my taste, a little bit too simple. What would you like to score it then, Charlie? Seven and a half. James. So I think going with the populist decision and making sure that everybody is happy here and 
that this was a crowd pleasing cheese on many, many levels. Exactly what Charlie said. It's it's got all of that. I love the fact that it's slightly oily. It's got the tyrosine. It's it, it it it's got a lovely. It's a welcoming cheese, and it's one that any cheesemonger can sell. You give a t t taste of this to anybody. They say, "Oh, yep, I'll have that straight away." Um, I love the taste of the cheese. Um, I like the fact that the thing that kind of really hooks me in towards the end. I'm not sure who makes this cheese. To be fair. I know there are a few producers in the United Kingdom of styles of cheese like this. There's at least three or four I could think of right now. And I don't think I've come across this one yet, to be fair, uh, in my cheese shop. Um, I love that kind of nutty Comte note. I'm, I'm rounding it up now. Um, and I think I'm... <laughs> I'm more convinced. I, I'm. I'm because of that. The, the differentiation of the proteolysis, the rind underneath that taste, and the hearts and the tyrosine. I think it offers a bit of a journey. So I'm going to go eight point five. What did I Charlie, say? Seven point five. You said seven point five. So shall okay, we settle so on, we, on an eight? An eight. Yes. Eight. Are you yep. happy with that, James? I'm as happy as I can be. Thank you. Uh, it's well, I thank my favourite cheese so far. Okay, one, one, two, eight, chaps. So I think this, oh, this is interesting. James. I think it's much more of the Morge, um dry yes. brush kind of vibe on the outside. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah, what yeah. I think about this broken curd in the centre. No, neither am I. Um, I'm not sure if that it doesn't look like it's arisen from um it's arisen from pack uh, packaging and transport. It looks like those are they were there already. Yeah. So this one is sort of a definitely a, 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 an alpine inspired well, style. Yeah. Um I think I like the rind. I think it's 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 attractive, smart, dry brushed. It's like wearing a suit. I'm getting I'm getting a farmyard hit me in the face as I smell the rind. Yeah. I'm driving down the road. It's raining. I'm in the Alps, and I'm smelling that smell. Ah, oh, for me, that's that's just turning into a West Country farmyard. Um, yeah. But I get the rain thing. That kind of lifts. Yeah. Lifts the dry. Uh, what I mean, yeah. I get that real, that real um, continental nose to it. Mm, wow. So that is um. Wow. Dancing on my tongue. Rhubarb. Get that, Charlie? No. Massive rhubarb for me. Fruity. I know what you mean, though. Wow. Rhubarb, uh, nothing. Yeah, no, it's, it, it, now you've said it, I'm sort of assembling the flavours of my mouth into a rhubarb shape. Um, I don't think I'd sure have gone there. On. I don't think I'd gone there without you saying it. I, I'm getting more sort of tomato leaf. And maybe red tomatoes as well. Tomato, tomato skin. Mm -hmm. Yes, tomato skin. Um, That's it a also has that... that I haven't come across. For I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm familiar with a lot of those flavors, but not like that. And I think it's got some sort of almost tannin-like impact, a drying of the mouth. A sort of puckering. Yeah. It's got a, an almost peppermint to finish? Or am I really reaching there? I think you're, I think you're reaching a bit. You, can you feel a kind of an aromatic? Um, or, 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 you know, once you've, once you've swallowed and we're, you know, into that last section of favour, I feel like it's um, almost dentine kind of... Now that you mentioned dentine, you remember those old pink dentine chewing gums? Yeah. Remember, we're showing our age, chaps. I've only just been in the shops 
only fashion changes. Um, okay, so what about some scores then, chaps? Appearance? Appearance is, is a bit low because of the... I, lower for me because of the the look of the cheese internally. Yeah, does that fall into flavour or to, I mean, and, and to look or texture or um, you're right. We need to we need to reflect that in the scores. Say appearance. Yeah, it's got, it's got seven. It's, it, I wouldn't go as far as to say this was like internally blown, but it's it's definitely got. It definitely feels to me like there's been gas developed inside the cheese, and that's got that. I'm um, go seven. Okay. Yeah, I, I think you could go a bit lower than that. Um, Six point five. Yeah, I, I think I think you, you could borderline say this is a flawed cheese because it's just opened up too much. And I think there are eggy flavours in there as well. So we're going to go five and a half. I just don't know where, where to put it. It just feels to me like this has had some bacterial action that's going on in the middle of the cheese that's pretty responsible for these funky flavours, some of which are really fascinating um, and other of which I think have got a... Um, a slightly sulfurous kind of not what I would choose. I don't know what's happened to my tongue, but my tongue's still trying to recover from this. It's almost like it's made it numb in a way, isn't it? Yeah. Stunned yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it? it's 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 interesting. Well, I still I think... need to challenge you on appearance then, guys, because one of you said seven, one said let, five, let's, five. Let, let's say let's say six and a half or okay. something, because there are elements of its appearance that are really positive. I like the outside and, and the smooth curd is good. It's this issue of it opening up in the center um, and as to whether that is a deliberate character of the cheese make or whether we're seeing coliforms or, or something bringing gas into it as it as it ages. Um, and the next is the aroma. We've got really powerful farmyard notes on the outside, which um, you know, there's, there's also some burnt toast in there as well. It's not, it's not again, it's not all bad. It's a real bundle, um, but I don't think we can get much better than sort of 6.5, 7.5 area. Yeah. Yeah, so I So we say 7. 6.5. Se 6 yeah, yeah. Seven. Seven. I think it's 7. 7. 7. Yeah. Um, on the That's texture... Yeah. The mouthfeel is um is okay. It's good. You know, the curd is good. But the, the issue is is what it is is what it then follows on with that sort of the humming, this sort of the, the physicality of the flavors in the mouth, that sort of trigeminal pungency. I mean, it's kind of fizzy in a way as well, histamine kind mm. of like this. It's uh so yeah. I the mouthfeel, yeah, I, I think it as it, it's okay. Um but there is I think we could then we go on to taste, but it breaks down fine on the milk. I think it breaks down fine. It's, it's quite a nice chew. It is a nice chew. Where are we going? Seven let's again? Let's 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 get let's go a bit higher, like eight, and bring in the issues that we're talking about in flavour. Yeah, so let's go seven and a half then for uh, mouthfeel. Okay. Uh, flavour for me. Um, I can't get over, for me, as subjective as it is, which I think is important for everybody to understand that it is subjective. It's, it, it's, it's got this, it's got a really rhubarb flavour to rhubarb notes. I don't know why, but it has, which I've never found in a cheese before. And then towards the end, my tongue is starting to be affected by... I, I don't know what. Um, it, it, it's it's, an, it's a very interesting journey. Um, it's not a cheese that is unpleasant at all. It's it's got a massive character to it. Um, again, I'm sure a cheese like this would work with wine. Um, I, that's, I, Charlie, I don't know. I I think it has much to recommend it, but more. Yeah. I find more too much of it challenging, um, mm. and so I'm coming down against it. I think, I think, I think, I think there's the potential for some of the flavors to be actual flaws, um, which makes me wonder if 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 this is the right cheese to have entered. Uh, yes, there you go. Yeah, that's um, it. 
That's they right. Should... I think they're. I think you're right. I think they could have. I think there's probably better examples of this cheese. To be I, think I think they're better without without some of these really wilder flavors. Mm -hmm. So this is from a small producer. So yeah. this, this is from a small producer who's produced this cheese. The look of it, pretty much, it looks pretty good, with the exception, obviously, the the the, the um the, the, the cracks throughout the middle of it. But if it hadn't have been for that, it would have looked pretty spot on, wouldn't it, Charlie? I mean, the way you've got it stacked up in that little pile, that's good photography, that is. So, yeah. Um, yeah, um, I, I... Sorry, chaps. Do you want to revisit the appearance then? Because you've given it a 6.5 and you're actually talking it up now. I'm, I'm not talking it up. I'm just saying that it's got an inside and an outside and the inside is great and the outside ain't. No, the other way around. Sorry. The outside the way is great and the inside ain't. Um, yeah, and the inside could also. So we're just talking about what it could be like and could, how it could be marked up next time. So all I'm trying to say is for the cheesemaker... Um, I love what's happening, the, the, the idea of this cheese. And I think, as Charlie's just said, there is an influence that is out of the control through the uh, through the breakdown and the aging of this cheese. Has happened. Something's happened to this cheese. And that's affected the taste, hasn't it, Charlie? I'd say so. I'd yeah. say so. So what are we going to give it for flavour, chaps? Six. Yeah, I wouldn't go any more. Yeah. We'll move on to the next one then. One one three one, please. Okay. Ooh. Interesting. That's a blue mold you got there. So I don't think so. That's a date. That's the sixteenth of something. That's the date that this cheese was uh, was made. Mm -hmm. It's been on the outside. I'm guessing that there were there may have been um next Charlie. Yeah, there was there was there was uh, there was material on the outside of this cheese. Yeah, that's what I'm trying in. to show. There is there definitely was a cloth wrapped at some point. Oh, uh, what's the name of this class again? Uh, best organic, organic card. Okay, so it could be anything at all. We're getting, it sounds really weird. I'm getting kind of a leathery note on the nose on the outside there, Charlie. Meeting. Meatiness on the inside or the outside, James? Kind of like a salt meat. Yeah. Inside. It's getting, like, it's getting like a light, you know, when you get new leather, just a light note of that. Does that suggest that there may this may have been larded as well then? Mm, that's possible. I'm going to go under the rind and see if I can taste any mustardy notes. No, but interesting. How are you feeling about the texture, chaps? It's got an interesting mouthfeel. It's got a sort of crystalline kind of, um, and I don't mean sort of calcium lactate. I mean like bigger crystal than that. Um, a little bit coarse, isn't it? Yeah. And it's got an old-fashioned sourness to it. A sour milk flavour with sort of hints of bitterness. Definitely sour. It's, it's a bitter sour. It's got that a little bit of um, lemon zest. Not lemon zest, but sort of the, the bitter bitterness on the edge of a lemon without the lemon bit. Yeah. Also a bit sulfury as well. Eggy. Feels like, yeah, I think it's got an egg note. Uh, 
Um, I'm not sure how this would go on a cheese board. This one. I I think it's I think it's quite a loud cheese in the mouth and not necessarily in a good way. I'm trying to think what I'd pair it with. You wouldn't want anything too acidic. Probably get a nice cider, still cider with this. I think you'd want to go smooth and sweet. Well, I'm thinking about still cider from Wildings, mm -hmm. from Be Becky and um, Sam Beck. Is it Ben and Becky? And Be Becky and Sam. You make a beautiful cider, Ditch It Hill or um, a Kingston Black. Sweet single variety or still cider would go with, with a sweetness would go really well with that. That's Thornton Sweet. Bit of note, I don't know. I think that would be amazing. Okay. It's a very interesting cheese. Um, yeah. Um, Farmy as well, I suppose. Let's work through it. Um, the appearance is appearance is good. I think it's got a good uh, character of uh, rustic artisan style. It's got a pale open, a, a pale um, yellow cheddar face with the cracks and fissures yeah. associated with cheddar or even a crumbly. It's got a variation of molds across its rind, which on the one hand is sort of interesting. On the other hand, it's concerning you want more consistency of that, perhaps. Um, it looks like some bits of damp. Yeah, it looks like some bits have got wetter than others. Um, and I think that's, that moisture is kicking off some interesting bacterial activity, some interesting microorganic activity. Um, and that's producing some of these intense sour notes, these aromatic sour notes, which I think are dominating this cheese. Grapefruit. Sour grapefruit, old grapefruit. Yeah, bang on, that's it, sour grapefruit. Um. Uh, okay, stale. let's give it some. That's why. That's why it goes so well with that sugary cider, like a really sweet, still sugary cider. Yeah, I, I, I think it's. The, I think the sourness is so strong. I wouldn't bring more acid to the party. I would. I would really just go silky, creamy, dessert wine, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. So how far have we got? We've got looks. We we've got aroma. We haven't got anywhere, my lovely. We need to yeah, give it did. a score. We, we, we commented on. Uh... You commented, but you didn't give it a score. Okay, he's gone. No, I'm back. I'm back. Uh, this chair was comfortable for the first four hours. It's becoming less so. Um, it's um, where do we get? So uh, the look. I think we have to give it a sort of six and a half, seven because of the inconsistent and concerning mold patterns on the outside. A six and a half. Yeah. On the aroma, I think it's all right. I mean, it's challenging, but it's not bad. There's not. It's not. It's not there's not anything sort of really nasty about it. Um and it, it suggests I know when I smell it, but I'm gonna get that kind of sour note. I think yes, I do know what you mean by that. And maybe there's a little bit of um cheese mite um aroma in there as well. I'm going seven. Okay, taken. Uh it's Jeff. What do we think of the texture? It's kind of crunchy, it's kind of cool. Granular, as you said. Hmm. I do hate it. Okay, taken. Uh, and, I'll, and on taste, I've got to drop down to a six or something. Six. Yeah. Well, we hit it at the same time. That's it. That's where it is. Six. All right. Okay, chaps. One, one, seven, two is our penultimate cheese. Penultimate. Penultimate. Hello. Oh, look at this. It is definitely. Gather style. Definitely gatherish. Gatorisque. Love the smell of this. I'm getting very excited by this. <laughs> uh, actually, every single cheese, to be fair, Cara, I've been excited about. I just get excited about cheese. Me too. I wake up and I think about cheese. Me too. I wake up, I think about getting the kids to school on time, and then I think about cheese. No, I think about getting the kids to school after I've thought about cheese. Mm. And what do we think about this cheese then, chaps? Uh, on the nose, I get a lovely... Oh, a sense of it's going to take me on a fruity, sweet, 
journey and budgy and buttery. I've got the the white um, tyrosine in there as well. If you can see any of those in there, I can. Um, this this is clearly aged. I'd say between sixteen to eighteen months. Useful moisture in that cheese. I think I'd Amazing come from there. Sorry? I think I'd say 12 to 16 months. It's, 12, still, 16. Got quite a, it's still got quite a, a flexible curd about yeah, it. Quite much. I spoke to you soon content. before I taste it. We said great moisture content. Great moisture, which, which as Charlie said, it's not that old. It's between 12 and 16, as you said. It's really well balanced. Got a little sort of fruit liqueur edge to it. You say I creamy and fudgy. It's definitely yeah, creamy it's... and fudgy. And he oh. didn't say white chocolate, but when he nearly said white chocolate, I thought he was going to say white chocolate. And it almost has a sort of white chocolate kind of edge to it. I get that. White chocolate. Said it. Okay, it's been said. It's out of the box. Um, I think this is this is a decent this is a decent Gouda. I think uh, it's not this as old as it could be. be. I always think that Goudas, when they get to a certain age, start breaking out those those aged flavors of of raisins and distilled fruit and tobacco leaf and and leather and and stuff like that and i don't think this one has reached that point yeah. i wonder if it's but meant I, to be. But well, i think the it's this good. example is beautiful what's beautiful james sorry it's a beautiful example um if this is what they're aiming for then this is great um i love the mouthfeel It's a really well executed cheese. A massive crowd pleaser for the for our continental friends. This is a British cheese. For our continental friends in Holland, I think they would be very pleased to try this cheese and eat this cheese. <laughs> I never think people like people making cheeses like they make cheeses. So I think they go no. But you don't tell them. Okay. Um, so running through the so so first the look, the black coat is very handsome, um, and the um, for me, not relevant to the cheese, but I'm just making the point here. The way it's been vacuum packed has taken the edge for me off the um, the appearance of the cheese. I don't like vacuum packing. I don't like the way it, like the way it flattens the surface of the cheese and makes sort of that sort of matte shiny. Um, but as a big cheese, I'm sure it would be wonderfully looking. Um, I like the little holes, although they're not that pronounced or clear. So, I don't know. Uh, I'm happy to give it an eight as a looker. I'm sorry. I'd like to go up slightly further because I don't think we should take into the packet the packaging into into consideration the fact that it's been packed for us to taste. So I'm I'm going to move away from that. Take the packaging lines off, which I can see as you su suggested. I think the 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 plastic oak black wax on top is a bit um is consistent. I I I'm eight eight point five to nine. So if you're happy, I'd like to go to eight point five. Okay. Thank you, Aroma, Charlie, maybe. I I I don't find vacuum pack can flow off throw off the aroma, particularly on a very narrow piece of cheese like this. But it smells clean and and um not fudgy, but a little bit of caramel. So that's nice enough. It's not it's not powerful, but it's it's good. So I don't know eight. Yeah, I'm 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 with you. I'm I'm again. I'm slightly higher. I did get uh, if you rewind, um, you'll hear me say how I love that noise. I I I think I prefer it to the other style that I first smelled this morning, which is similar to a Galva style. Um, on the nose, this is slightly um, more on point for me. 8.5. And flavour, I will be 8 again. 
Uh, we've got texture. Texture is it strong suit? Eight and a half. Eight and a half. I think flavour. I'd be eight and a half. I would be seven and a half. So settle on eight. Okay. Caps, thank you very much. And on to sure. our very final cheese of the day. One, one, nine, oh. Cracking cheese to look at. Consistent. Uh, looks like a on the outside. Maybe two kilos whole, sort of eight inches across, something like that. And two. Yes, two definitely, two. without a shadow of a doubt. Um, nice smelling cheese. I, I think this is an attractive cheese. It's got that farmy note on the outside. Definitely got hay on the outside. Yeah, it's got proper hay barn, hasn't it? Hay barn. Alpine style. It's even got, yes, as you say, it's got hay on the outside. Sorry, I wasn't listening, Cliff. It does uh, have hay on the outside. I think I know what it might be then. In that case, and maybe it's not hay, maybe it's straw. Is it straw or hay? It's hay. hay. So when I'm thinking of, it's hay, but yeah, it is hay. Oh wow! I certainly haven't tasted it like this before. I grew up on a farm. Used to play on the haystacks all the time. We used to abseil down the edges and make forts and the whole thing. And that taste you get when the hay gets in your mouth, that dry hay, it's got that. This is a brilliant yes. cheese. Oh, brilliant. Um, I'm loving it. It's much more balanced for me. It's got none of those sharp flavors, none of the uh, overtly decomposed um, bacterial notes that come from from sort of unexpected microbiological action. It's got a creaminess and it's got that second layer of complexity. It's all to do with that hay. With almost- The only thing today that's made me curl my feet, which is a really good thing when I curl my feet. It's happening under the table now, everybody. Has it got black currant notes or something? And it's got red fruit or dark black fruit notes to it. It's got something like that. It's a very, very lovely cheese. Damson, maybe damson notes. Damson, plummy yeah. damson. The the, um, the the chewing straw notes I get, Charlie. That was very. I'm imagining you as a child, jumping into hay and chewing bunches of straw. <laughs> Um, I get that taste. Oh, that's I, this has completely left fielded me. I've been pretty lackadaisical coming through these other cheeses, which have been very good in their own way, but I'm sort of having to search through them, finding the bits I like. This is a brilliant cheese. Yeah, it's good. It's got okay. something. It's got something. I want to say burnt. I don't mean burnt. I mean like. Um. Like heavily cooked fruit or oh. even gooseberry. As well. Gooseberry. Gooseberry. Yeah, I'll go with gooseberry. Yeah, definitely. Gooseberry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Count me in. There you go. It's gooseberry. Well, it's gooseberry, it's yeah. straw, it's creamy, it's buttery, it's slightly farmy. It's a journey. And a journey of flavour that stimulates my esophagus. <laughs> stimulates your esophagus. Um, but it reminds me of, you know, there's real farms, which smell of cow shit. And there's like famous five farms that only smell of like all the nice stuff and ginger beer. Like me, chaps. Keep chatting. This is, this is the famous five bar. This is the famous five bar version. Yeah, none of the none of the nasty real life in this one. This is just the fruits that you read about in recipe books. This is a, a probably from a very well manicured farm that had their finger on the pulse and know exactly what they're doing. It's um, exactly it's doing. very clean. Those flavors are purposeful, 
and have meaning. It's alpine in a in a in a, in a continental style. It's an alpine style for me. The springiness of the of the of the paste is is pleasing. The mouthfeel is beautiful. Those gooseberry hay kind of notes. It's a what a what a beautiful journey. A gorgeous cheese. I'd have this with a Pinot Blanc as it happens. <laughs> Uh, okay. so I've got one here. Very nice. Here's one you prepared earlier. <laughs> um, uh, I have to give me a moment. What, what, what fruits I'd like with this? Because I, I always, I think that we want to go down the white route. I, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. Something aromatic yeah, that echoes that gooseberry or something like that, but with a with a hint of tropical notes to give it as kind of implied sweetness. Um, you uh, said you could go in a good Sauvignon. I, I, let's just whip through the marks here, right? I love the use of hay on the outside. It is consistent throughout the cheese. There are no um, blemishes. Um, I think we have to give it nine or nine and a half. You nine know what I'm going to ask half. you? Yes, I know. And I'll have, a, I'll have an answer. I always do. You always do. Nine and a half. Nine and a half. Okay. Smell. Um, Taste or smell? Aroma, please. Aroma. I think I think its weakness is its aroma. I like the hay notes. It's just that it has got a bit of real life farm, um, a little life, little life cow urine coming off that rind for me. Um, uh, maybe it's a bit of ammonia or something like that. It I just takes just takes the edge off, but it's it's real and it's not unpleasant. But I'm going to dip down to an eight for that. I. I... I think given the fact that this is an organic cheese, an organic hard style of cheese, I'd like to give this an 8.5 because what I'm smelling on the outside of the rind is the entrance to the farm where this is made. Okay. I think your romanticism is getting the best of you, but if you're going to have anything get the best of you, let it be romance. So, okay, let's go yes. with this. Let it be cheese. Right, texture. I love the smooth texture. Gorgeous. I was expecting much more of a crumbly, slightly acidic uh, break of the curd, and it doesn't. It goes to a paste, um, and that's that's nice. Yeah. Eight and a half. Good for me. Nine. 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 Wow. And finally, flavour, chaps. Um, there is clearly going to be no photo finish, Stuart's inquiry for this class, is there? Uh, you don't know. I you do. don't know. Um, I, I think it does the cheese thing well in a very professional fashion. No, no outlandish flavors a problem. And then it comes in with a second layer of extra complexity to do with to do with the fruits. To do with I think there, there are sort of a background of red or black fruits, but there's like gooseberry thing is out front. Um, and I think they're just gentle hay notes, but the nicest part of hay that sort of. Only in the sunshine, hey. Um, so I'm loving that. I think they're really, really proud, really proud notes, and I and I, I love that. Ooh, nice, James. Anything to add other than the score? No, it's it's amazing. I'm just tasting another bit of the other cheese that I tried earlier on. It's tricky. What score are you giving on flavour here, Charlie? I'm giving it nine. I could be pushed up to nine and a half. I really could. I'm thinking 8.75. Oh, 8.83 clearly is the right answer. I don't mind. All in the right, all in the right zone. Come as on, as boys. I'm concerned, this cheese is knocking the other cheeses out of the park. Um, I'm absolutely loving it. So you're giving it a nine, and James, you're giving it a eight point seven five. Eight point seven five, which, as we all know, is eight point eight seven five six seven as an average. We're going for a Ten nine. Ten more to come the call back for you. <laughs> I, I'm really pleased with the last one. Really pleased with the last one. I thought some of the others were a little wild, um, and this one is has got has harnessed the farm without letting any of the difficult wildness in at the same time. 
Okay, guys. So thank you very much. Uh, we're concluding this class. And the winner, as you've quite clearly pointed out, is ES1190. And on your boards. And we have a joint silver, which is ES1172 and ES1076. Tara, do you mean E5? Yeah. Did I say <laughs> E6? I'm sorry, E5, yes. No, you said ES. Yes. Ah, yes, E5, E5. It's been a long <laughs> day. Five. You try keeping this rabble under control. <laughs> I can I can see it's quite challenging. <laughs> it's been joyous. It's been joyous. So thank you that uh, the winner will go through to the finals on Tuesday the 14th to be judged live. Uh, thank you again to our sponsors, our wonderful sponsors. Uh, Butlers, guys, show us, flash us your aprons. Thank you, and to the amazing Peter's Yard. Uh, well done, ladies. Well thank you, darling. Thank you. It, it's it's been real. Um, <laughs> and on that note, it's I just, just want a to compliment, thank, James. Is it? No, I want to thank you for both. a compliment. It just wasn't one. I want to thank you both. I still have hair. Thank I still you. have a marble that's rattling around in there, but it's been a, such yeah. a pleasure judging with you this morning. Thank you very, very much. Cool. Thank you very much. You've been brilliant. Take it easy. Keep it cheesy. Keep it cheesy. Bye.